Hi, welcome to the first uh, lecture on linear algebra. Today we are going to talk about vectors. Let's get this started. So, uh, if you are taking this course after Calculus 1, pretty much everything you have seen so far in your mathematical career is built on scalars. They were not given that name, but when you are using, just using a single number to specify a quantity, uh, that is the case of referring to scalars. Vectors, very simply put, could be considered as a set of uh, scalars listed in a particular order. You can write it in a column or in a row or in some other notation. Um, the most common notation in your textbook is this column representation. You can take a set of vectors and stack them next to each other and in that case you get uh, something called a matrix, plural matrices. And you can actually get a set of matrices and stack them like the pages of a book and get some higher dimensional uh, arrays. Now uh, you could put some numbers here for a database uh, it could be like the age and the height and social security and such but those kind of sets of numbers have very limited use uh, perhaps only for databases in physics there is some restriction as to what kind of numbers are used uh, or what kind of quantities are displayed by vectors and in mathematics we also have a set of restriction as to what the properties of these things are supposed to be. But for now, it suffices to say, well, it's just an ordered list of numbers. Well, going to applications, uh, let's go back and uh, look at our basic uh, science or physics classes and see what were the quantities that were represented by a single number and what were the quantities that required a set of numbers. Vectors always connotate uh, something that has both magnitude and direction. Scalars, just a single number, does not have any connotation of a direction in it. So, uh, a good example of a scalar quantity will be temperature. Temperature, uh, you don't think about it pointing in a particular direction and such is just a single number. As another quantity you come across is the mass of an object. Mass is just a single number. What else can you think about from basic science classes where that were represented by just a single number? If you said charge, that is as an electric charge, that's another application. Of course you can think about time, uh, simpler concept than these perhaps, speed, and so on. Examples of vectors, perhaps the most uh, useful example for us is displacement. <clears throat> if we consider a two-dimensional setup and an object displaces from the location A to the location B, uh, we draw an arrow representing the displacement vector A to B. So A to B written as A and then B with an arrow on top of it uh, represents displacement. Of course, a position of an object can be thought about as a vector. So if a position of an object is this location R, you can always associate that to a vector that goes from the origin to that location. So we can... Uh, now in the textbook, uh, uh, vectors are always either capital or boldface or they have an arrow on top of them and such. But of course, uh, for my writing, that's going to be a little bit too much of an effort to put all these uh, decorations on a letter. So you ha might have to just get used to the fact that uh, from context, you should be able to say if uh, something is a vector or not. 
So position is a vector that we are going to uh, deal with. Next, uh, we have, of course, uh, rate of change of position with respect to time. What is that called? Remember that? Of course, velocity. Velocity is another application of uh, vectors. Then you have, of course, acceleration, uh, which is rate of change of velocity with respect to time. Then you have uh, uh, things such as momentum, force, weight, electric field, magnetic field, and so on. Those are all examples of vectors. Let's go ahead and take a look at some uh, pictures that uh, bring this uh, issue home. Let's go to... Uh, Okay, this is the velocity field of Hurricane Sandy, which was near uh, northeast corner in 2012. So you see uh, a lot of arrows drawn in this picture. When you are close to the eye of the hurricane, you see the arrows are bigger, meaning the magnitude is bigger. And far away, uh, the arrows are smaller as you go around the I, you see that the vector is turning, indicating that the direction of the wind is changing. So a vector has magnitude and a direction. Now, when you are dealing with uh, magnets, of course, you can put a compass to figure out what the direction of a magnetic field is at any given point. So here's I have a magnet, and if I put uh, these compasses here, we see the direction of the magnetic field. Uh, this one doesn't show the magnitude. Sometimes to see the magnitude, you have to see how crowded the lines become. So we over here, we see lots of lines indicating the magnitude is higher, and uh, out here, perhaps, the magnitude is much less. So uh, this compass just shows the direction, and for the magnitude, you have to do something else. Similar issues comes up in electric field. If you have a charge, it creates an electric field, and then you can have electric field lines uh, very similar to the uh, magnetic uh, field lines. Same issue comes up in um, gravitational field. If you have an object uh, of unit mass somewhere in space, there is a force that is acting on it, a force of gravity. That is going to be the, uh, the uh, gravitational field at a specific point. Okay, so the, this is some examples of uh, uh, vectors we have in mind. You remember at the uh, in the previous lecture we talked about uh, orienting this course for understanding uh, vibrations, vibrations of systems. So in that case, uh, uh, a system we said is set of several objects that are connected to each other in a certain fashion so that their movements influence each other. So this is perhaps the simplest such things you can come up with. So what's a vector in this case? Well, there's a position for this ball number one, there's a position for no ball number two. If you put those two in a vector, well, you have a vector describing the system. Okay, and then you can imagine you can have three of these balls or four of them and so on and your vector becomes uh, longer in that case, meaning there are more entries in the vector itself. You can give the position uh, from a left point, but the traditional thing is to give the position of these balls with respect to their uh, equilibrium position. Wherever their neutral position is, you measure from that location to see how far uh, the ball has moved. So x1 would be the displacement of ball number one, x2 will be displacement of ball number two, and if you have more of these balls, there will be x3, x4, and so on. And then you are checking how each of them is, <coughs> is moving. So uh, this was some example of uh, vectors we had. Now, what are we going to do? Well, in mathematics classes you have taken so far, you essentially have learned 
how to add, subtract, multiply, divide, raise to a power, and investigate functions. What we are going to do at the basic level, we are going to learn to apply all of these things to matrices. So we are going to take matrices, certain matrices, and try to apply these things to it. Well, what would that do other than keeping us busy for a semester? Well, we actually need to go all the way to the end of this list to be able to apply linear algebra to vibration analysis. We have to be able to make functions of matrices, investigate certain properties of them called eigenvalues and eigenvectors, and those things are going to give us the frequencies and magnitude of vibration, and we'll have a opening to discussion of vibration in, on a mathematical level. Okay, uh, very uh, first thing that we want to know is uh, under what condition would you say one vector is equal to another vector? So that's the most basic thing. So we have a concept of equality of vectors uh, or matrices, equality of vectors. Let me, uh, <coughs> mathematically speaking, uh, the issue is very simple. If you say a vector AB is equal to the vector XY, well, you mean A is equal to X and B is equal to Y. By the way, these are referred to as the components of your vectors. Components, uh, individual scalars that you have in your list. But what does it mean for two vectors to be equal? So, for example, if I am going from this location to this location and I have a displacement vector, and then I go from this location to that location, and here's another displacement vector. Uh, let's call this thing displacement vector 1 and displacement vector 2. So long as the components of this thing, that is the amount of lateral movement or rise or fall, are the same, we will say that these two vectors are equal to each other. So equality of vectors is just equality of components of those vectors. Now when it comes to your physics classes, your engineering classes, the issue becomes more involved than that. There are two types of vectors. One is called free vectors and the other one is called bound vectors. Free vectors and bound vectors. Free vectors means, uh, well, you take this uh, vector and translate it parallel to itself, and now it's here. And for all practical purposes, this is same as that. Free vectors, you can move them around, and uh, they stay equal to the original uh, description they have. Bound vectors, uh, uh, that's when you care about when you start your vector. We wouldn't have uh, that many applications of bound vectors in our class, uh, but just to, sh to tell you, there's some very basic cases uh, from basic science. You already know about this, but <coughs> good to know. Uh, well, in the law of uh, levers or levers, uh, you, you know when we are sitting on a seesaw, uh, where you sit makes all the difference. Even though your weight is the same, your weight while you're seated here, and if you go sit all the way at the end of this bar, <coughs> your vector is the same, but its influence quite different. So there's a notion of the distance from the fulcrum or the arm that <coughs> distinguishes your uh, application of your weight to this uh, uh, situation. So in our in our problem, in our problem. Uh, these two are considered to be same. So we are not sitting on a seesaw or we are not talking about uh, application to torques and such and uh, yes, most of the time we are just dealing with free vectors in our class. Okay. <coughs> More on uh, notation uh, as we said before uh, these are uh, column vectors, row vectors, in some other textbooks they might put brackets, especially physics classes. 
uh, the vectors we said <coughs> usually shown by boldface or uh, capital and uh, on WebAssign you should be careful to uh, use the letters of the vectors to be bold vectors okay <coughs> so we said the uh, main thing to do is to start learning about these operations uh, first two are as trivial as they can be and then gradually things actually get much more complicated as you go to uh, various concepts of multiplication things are going to be uh, more complicated and then uh, another level of complication for uh, uh, inverses of matrices another level of complication for powers of matrices and uh, this is right next to it what would we mean by a function of a matrix for example if I have a matrix and I want to apply exponential sign or cosine to it uh, what are the <coughs> required steps we are going to talk about that but uh, starting easy let's just talk about addition and subtraction of vectors so arithmetic of vectors starts with uh, addition and subtraction well mathematically speaking this is as straightforward as it can be uh, very simple so if I have a vector uh, say 2 3 5 and I have another vector which is 1 minus 1 3 and I want to add them the addition is component wise that is you're adding the first entries second entries and the third entries and you get your result for example 3 2 and 8 and if it was subtraction uh, as simple as that nothing uh, complicated about that either the ease with which we are doing these two operations uh, kind of misleads us in the next level that is uh, with the multiplication and the other operation things are substantially more complicated so it's kind of a disadvantage we are starting with such a simple thing and it kind of leads some students into wrong thinking that we are always doing component wise operation of this type uh, that is rarely the case so this is essentially the last easy operation that you see and everything else is going to be a bit rough from here on well there is actually one more easy thing it's called scalar multiplication scalar multiplication is special case of addition that is if you are adding a vector to itself like 2 3 5 and if you're adding to it to itself 2 3 5 well of course well the behavior same as before 4 6 10 which we could have written as twice the vector 2 3 5 so this is a scalar this is a vector multiplying scalar by a vector is straightforward you multiply that scalar with each of the entries of the vector okay now what does this thing mean in uh, from an applied point of view uh, applied point of view is a little bit more involved than this thing so we said the best uh, way to think about vectors is in terms of displacement that's what you do in geometry as well so suppose I have a vector let's suppose our, our vectors are in a two dimension so suppose I have a vector uh, let's consider this thing u and then suppose I have another vector here let's call consider this one w the question is what do I mean by u plus w let's learn that well we might as well move to some other location uh, draw a copy of u so I translate this thing over to here remember we're talking about free vectors this is the same as that then I copy w translate it parallel to itself uh, then u plus 
w is going to be this displacement okay that uh, conforms to our traditional thinking if you go from location that is specified by this point to this point and then next leg of the trip to this point finally your overall movement can be considered as going from this location to that one and that's what u plus w is going to be for us that's going to be referred to as a polygonal addition of vectors so if I have u, uh, w and a third vector uh, what I would have done would have been to draw the, uh, one of them and then the next one and then if I have the third one and if I had the fourth one I just add them all together and what we get at the end is sum of these vectors this, so this is referred to as a sum of the vectors uh, in uh, your uh, physics classes it might be considered as a resultant of those vectors or forces and so on <coughs> another description of sum of uh, vectors if you have just two of them is the parallelogram construction let's go ahead and just reuse this u and w again so if I go ahead and copy u and copy w both of them starting at the same point and continue building a parallelogram on these two with u and w as the adjacent sides of it then the diagonal is going to be the sum okay in this construction I drew one and then the next one and the sum was uh, from the beginning of the first vector to the end of the last vector that was the sum in this case we drew both of them starting at the same point we completed our parallelogram and the diagonal is doing the same job as it was doing over there okay uh, next up is how about the subtraction the uh, best thing to do is to learn how to draw the negative of a vector first so if I have a vector suppose this is my vector u how do you think we should draw the negative of that you have two options one well, many options but two of them stand out negative of u is to flip it uh, in this fashion so this becomes negative of u or exchange the head and tail of this vector so this is also another way of drawing negative of u so if I have uh, a use for u minus w one way to think about this thing is u plus negative of w so if I have let's draw this picture again if I have u drawn and uh, let me draw the w also at starting the same location so that uh, we don't redraw it so suppose this is w and then the question is to draw u minus w you have two options depending on which one of these two ideas you use one is to tear w and convert it to minus w and draw it here so this is minus w and now you're adding these two so you can make your parallelogram with so make a parallelogram with these two and uh, I should have drawn a little bit better than that let me try it again so uh, here I'm completing my parallelogram and the diagonal of this thing that's going to be u plus minus w another way of thinking about this thing is minus w plus u so what was minus w that is taking w and exchanging the heads and tails of it so this becomes 
minus W. So this is just as good as that. Minus W plus U, I can imagine I have minus W, then continue the trip with U, and the sum of these two is going to be the following vector. So this is going to be another way of doing the same operation. So it's going to be minus W plus U. This green vector here and this green vector here are equal. We said this is uh, free vectors and these two are representing the same thing. So in short, if you are adding them, this, this diagonal is going to be uh, that starts with the same location where U and W started. That is going to be the sum. The other diagonal of this parallelogram is going to be the difference. Okay, and the, uh, the difference always points to the same ending point that the positive entry is showing. So if I have u minus w, the <coughs> difference of these vectors has to end at u itself. Okay, so that was uh, addition and subtraction of vectors. Uh, once again, uh, if you're doing from point of view of algebra, it's very simple because what you're doing here is a component-wise operation. When it comes to doing it in a, in a picture, you have to be a little bit more careful. Uh, a few more definitions for some of the problems in the text. Uh, if you have a vector uh, somewhere in your page and you move it so that it starts from the origin so you're copying it here this is called uh, so if this is a this is a in standard position so the book calls this in standard position meaning having your vector starting at the origin sometimes that is <coughs> uh, makes uh, life a bit easier okay uh, there's a concept of parallel vectors. If you have a vector and multiply it by some number, it might stretch or shrink or perhaps go in the other direction. If you multiply by negative number, these are all going to be considered parallel vectors. Parallel vectors uh, are obtained by multiplying some vector by a number. One of the main challenges that we are going to face is going to be vectors in uh, three dimension. So vectors in uh, three dimension. Let's suppose we attempt to graph a vector v, which is with components one, two, three. Well, uh, this is a rather complicated uh, process. Uh, you probably take a course on that, engineering graphics or something like that. Here we are just making a very brief uh, introduction to the topic. So here uh, is a typical way where we are representing our three-dimensional coordinate system. So typical is x, y, and z. So one is displacement in the x direction. So here I'm supposed to take a step of 1. 2 is displacement in the y direction, so you go parallel to that axis, 1, 2. And 3 is displacement in the z direction, so you can go maybe 1, and 2, and 3. So this is the location 1, 2, 3. <coughs> It represents the vector that goes from the origin to that location. So this could be your vector v. Uh, the process is uh, complicated and sometimes you might want to use some uh, tools to help you in that respect. Uh, let's go take a look at uh, something else that we have here, I guess, would be this one. Uh, Let's go try uh, drawing a, a vector here or a point here. Uh, okay, so red is good colors. Let's draw a point. Uh, so 
suppose I want to take uh, um, two steps in the x direction. One, two, uh, maybe that's not visible. Let's take more steps. And then some steps in the y direction. Uh, okay, it took say eight steps. And some steps in the z direction. Uh, now, by the time we arrived at that point, it's not all that clear how many steps we have taken in any direction. That's one of the problems of showing three-dimensional space on a two-dimensional medium. Uh, and there's no simple solution for that. Here is something that's going to help us perhaps. Uh, so these dotted lines showing how many steps we took in each of these directions and our vector is going from origin to that location. One of the main concepts of uh, linear algebra that's going to be a challenge for us is the concept of linear combination. The idea is that if you have a vector u and a vector, uh, let's call it v, how can you make a third vector out of them? Well, if you limit yourself to addition, subtraction, and scalar multiplication, the things you can do are like adding them or maybe subtracting them maybe multiplying something, uh, one of them with one number, multiply the other one with some number, and adding and subtracting them, and perhaps having only u in your mix, perhaps having only v in your mix, or any of these combination. Each of them is a linear combination, and all of them together, so the set of all linear combinations. Will be so to it's a set. We use the curly bracket to indicate a set. We take the vector u multiply by any number you want, let's call that A. Let's take a vector V multiply by any number you want, let's call that B, and add these two given that a and b are just ordinary numbers, they are real numbers. Uh, so these creatures with a and b some ordinary real numbers. Okay, this creature is called the set of all linear combinations of u and v, and it's uh, something that we need to wrap our head around and understand what it is. We're going to play with this. It's an infinite set, and for that reason, it's a little bit hard to grasp. Let's draw it in a picture. Suppose I have u and uh, v. Let's try to display this, the set of all linear combinations. So. Perhaps the most uh, basic combination is just adding the two of them. So that would be the <coughs> sum of these two. I have to draw this whole vector from here to there, but then my picture is going to become very crowded if I draw all of them. So for the other ones, I wouldn't draw that vector, so the picture wouldn't be too complicated. So what if I had two u? So by if I come here is two u. And if I add the v to it, well, we said we can do the uh, parallelogram construction. So this point is going to be 2u plus v. Again, let me remind you that we are going from the origin all the way to this point. That's the vector we are after. Well, what if I had 2v plus u? So I can double the v and then uh, say I come as far as here and then add the u to it, I'll be somewhere here, and u plus 2v will go all the way to this location, so this is a u plus 2v. Well, what if I had 2u plus 2v? 2u plus 2v is going to come all the way to here. Well, what if I have 3u plus v? 
and so on. You can just multiply u by any number, v by any number, and add these two, and that's going to be another linear combination. So if you multiply by negative, u by negative, you will be going this direction, and then so if you do something like that, by now you are at minus u plus v. If you uh, multiply v by negative also, so you this becomes negative v, and if you add these two, this becomes minus u minus v. <coughs> to make it more complicated, a and b don't have to be whole numbers. I can have one and a half u and say 1.2 v. I'll be somewhere here. So what kind of a picture is going to emerge from all this activity? What is it that I'm looking at when I do all linear combinations of u and v? So that's going to be one of the challenges we are going to face later on. If you have a bunch of vectors and you consider all linear combinations of them, what kind of a shape are you going to get? Most common answer, the most common answer for just u and v is that it's going to be a plane. Okay, here we have a plane of uh, set of points which is constructed out of u and v. So it is made, so I had a vector, I called it u, I had another vector called it v. These were the building blocks, like Lego blocks, and out of which, by stacking them next to each other, I made this. What I have here is a plane. Is it always a plane? Well, what if I had u like this? Um, well, what do you think would be an exception? What if v happened to be parallel to u? For some reason, I pick a v like this. What is the linear, all the linear combination of u and v in this case? If I add, multiply u by any number, v by any number, I add or subtract them, what kind of a shape do I get? So what we are going to, one thing we are going to do in this course is that every now and then I'm going to pause and uh, wait for you to make up your mind for uh, for the question that I'm asking. Uh, you want to pause this thing, think for a second or two, and then come back to to the discussion. So this is a cue for you that it's time for you to put your uh, contributions to the course and then answer a certain question. So what do you think? Set up all linear combinations. Well, however you add or subtract this to, you're stuck on a certain line which extends in direction of u and v. So here, in this case, uh, you are going to get a line. In this case, you are getting a plane. <coughs> in simple case, when you are in two dimension, it's kind of easy to tell which way you are going to be leaning. Is it the answer going to be a line or the answer is going to be a plane? Very easy to tell. If the uh, vectors that you had to begin with we are parallel to each other, and that's some extension, well, you are going to construct a line. If they are not parallel to each other, <coughs> then you are going to get a plane. Of course, and the, uh, the most extreme situation is that your u and v, both of them, are zero vectors, meaning the end and starting point of them are the same. If you add zeros to each other, whatever you do, you just get zeros. So at a very extreme case, you are going to get a point, if u and v to begin with were just zero vectors, had no extension, however you combine them, you still get a zero. So your choices are between a point, a line, and a plane. For two vectors, choices are between point, a line, and a plane. Well, what if you have three vectors? What if we have four vectors? And so on. So gradually the issue becomes a bit more complicated as to what is the set of all linear combinations of vectors that you have, and linear algebra helps us in that uh, respect as well. Okay, so we talked about linear combination. This is a topic you want to practice and make sure you understand what it is. There'll be uh, a few uh, homeworks for you on WebAssign. Uh, remember uh, to use a bold case, a bold fonts for vectors. Okay, it's kind of annoying when you are on one of these software and you don't live exactly according to their uh, requirements. Um, uh, so on WebAssign, uh, 
you have to type your vectors by using bolt font from its palette and then everything else will be following easily okay until the next le lecture good luck and god bless